Hello. Uh, we've been talking in a little series on the objections that people sometimes have to the Christian faith. And today I want to think about uh, the question about other religions, which is something that you may well think about or certainly something that you'll have had raised with you in topics uh, where there have been discussions around this whole area of, of faith. Uh, you may have heard it said uh, something along the lines, well, surely we're all on different paths, all but all the roads at the end lead up the same mountain we'll all get there in the end at the end of the day and different people have different paths it doesn't matter because we'll get there it'll be okay another way that you may have heard it illustrated is uh with the illustration of some blindfolded men and an elephant now if you've never heard this before this is going to sound really bizarre but uh bear with me the idea is that uh, people are blindfolded and because we can't see clearly, we're all trying to work out what is in front of us. And it is an elephant, but some say, well, I know what an elephant looks like then because they've got hold of the tail. And so it's it's long and it's swishy and it's thin. Others say, well, it's, it's actually more like a tree because I'm uh, fumbling around, around the leg area and thinking, well, these big thick trunks um, of, uh, of trees, that this is what it must be. Others, of course, would say, well, actually, it is a trunk because it's, it's like a big snake or something, as they try and describe an elephant blindfolded. It's an old illustration. It's possibly uh, a Buddhist parable right at the beginning. And there's an American poem about it as well. And it sounds really reasonable, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Just inclusive and yeah, I can see the sense in that. But hang on. Who says the, the writer of the poem or the maker of the parable is the only one seeing things straight? Now, if you think about it, that is pretty patronising to uh, people of Christian belief or Muslim belief or Jewish belief or Buddhist belief, even atheist belief. It's actually really quite arrogant saying, well, you lot, you're all arguing about religion, but, but let me tell you, I know what it's all about. So to say that all religions, I think, like Christianity, Islam, Hindu, Judaism, Buddhism, Sikhism, Satanism, Wicca, plus all the ones I've offended by not thinking about or naming there, are essentially the same. It's really lazy thinking, isn't it? It's obvious that they all say different things. Now, Jesus makes some very bold claims as to why you should follow him and him alone. And whether that strikes you as arrogant or not, you need to check out the truth of those claims, I'd say. So he says bold things that might upset us, like I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Nobody gets to God unless they approach him via me, says Jesus. It's an exclusive claim. And in this day and age, that might be an offensive uh, kind of claim, but it's a claim he makes. So what do we make of it? By saying that if you want to know the Father, you've got to come to know him, Jesus is making an exclusive claim and actually he's putting himself on the level with God. He's saying that I am, you, you've seen me, you've seen God, as he says in another place. So if anybody ever knocks on your door and says, well, Jesus never really um, claimed to be God, then you need to open the Bible, if you've got one, or, or your app or whatever, at John chapter 14, John chapter 14, and then read some random some verses from there. Trust in God, trust also in me, he says, right at the beginning of that chapter. And then he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And uh, exactly following that verse in verse 6, verse 7 says, if you really know me, you'll know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And just in case there's any doubt there, in verse 9, he goes on to say, anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. That is a bold claim, right? Well, if you've seen me, then you've seen the Almighty God, is what Jesus is saying. Now, if I was to make that claim, it wouldn't take you very long to realise that I was talking nonsense, that I was either mad 
deluded, thinking I was the son of God, or I was just malevolent and bad, saying, ha ha, I'm going to trick some followers to give me all their money and property and become a guru somewhere. Or the other, you know, other alternative is that I'm God. Now, if you look at the life of Jesus, then I think you see someone who doesn't seem to be bonkers, certainly doesn't seem to be bad. He goes around making a whole lot of people better and, and teaching good things, if, the, if that's his thing. So you've got to weigh up the equivalent. Well, is he who he says he is? Does he live like he says we should live? Does he speak truth? Does he, even when he's confronted by his enemies, lash out? Does he walk the walk or does he just talk the talk? And that's the challenge to us as we look at the life of Jesus, which is what I'm recommending that we do on the Christianity Explored course. It's a seven session thing where really we just look at who Jesus is. The one who says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Do all paths lead up, does it lead up the same mountain? Well, clearly not as far as Jesus is concerned. Can we say that Christianity is one way, but it's only one way among others? Jesus says, well, no. No one comes to the Father except through me. And can I just say, if that upsets you, then, then great, because you get it. You haven't taken the option of thinking, oh, I'm, I can't be doing with thinking all that because it's complicated and it, it it demands something of my time and also something of me. You're not trying to say, well, I'm sure they're all all right in the end. Um, you try and keep everybody happy. Yeah, yeah, they're all as good as each other, people. This is not a blue Peter colouring competition that we're trying to judge here. We're trying to work out some big questions about life and death. And therefore... It's important, I think, that we make an informed decision about who Jesus is and what that means for us. This, um, this idea that uh, Jesus says, look, see me and you've seen God, that's either right or it's wrong. And so we can't even say, look, he was a good religious teacher, because look what he taught. He said, if you see me, you've seen God. So either Jesus is the real deal or, frankly, he's nothing. So we can't even say that Jesus is a good teacher or that he's nice or that he's good, not with any integrity, because the claims he makes demand a stronger response than that. You either love Jesus with everything you've got or you hate him. Jesus, I think, says, crown me or crucify me, but don't just like me. That's way too weak a response. So like I say, uh, next week we're going to be announcing the dates and the times that you'll be able to get online to do Christianity Explored with us. It's a course of seven sessions. You'll watch a DVD, you'll get to read some stuff and ask any questions you want on the life of Jesus as it's recorded in Mark's biography of his life. More details about that next week. But in the meantime, I would urge you, if you've never read about Jesus as an adult and made an informed decision about this, then how do you even know what you're rejecting? Like him? No. You either love him or you're dismissive of him. So let's make an informed decision about that. Have a great week. And we'll talk to you again next week with the last of this little series. And then we'll tell you how you can join a Christianity Explore group. Cheers.